Hi everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video I'm going to be talking you through the bond energy calculations and these only appear on the higher tier paper but it does mean if you can master these questions you'll achieve those higher grades that you're aiming for. So this is what a typical exam question would look like. We've got the reactant molecules and the products and because we've got the displayed formulas it shows the bonds between the atoms. So the question could be work out the overall energy change for this reaction using the bond energies in the question. So I'm going to use these molly mods which are an excellent way of helping us visualize what's going on in the reaction and these are available from Philip Harris and I've put a link to the Philip Harris website in the description below my video. You can see here I've used the molly mods to make a molecule of CH4 methane and I've also used them to make these two molecules of oxygen. And you'll remember from the last video that when chemical reactions happen, first of all we need to put energy in to break the bonds of those reactant molecules and then as the products form and those new bonds are made, energy is released. And I'm going to put a link up here now to that previous video if you need a reminder. So how much energy do we need to put in to break those bonds of the reactant molecules? Well, luckily in the exam question, you're always given a table of bond energies and these can vary slightly from question to question, but they're always in kilojoules per mole. So let's start by breaking up this CH4 molecule. And when we do that, we need to put energy in. So the first thing we need to work out in the question is how much energy do I need to put in to break apart that molecule and you can see we've broken four bonds here they are and we can see from the table that each C to H bond takes 413 kilojoules per mole of energy so to break up that molecule it's going to be four of these bonds that we break and that's going to take four times 413 which is 1652 kilojoules per mole of energy but you can see we've also need to break up these two oxygen molecules. So once again, we need to put energy in to do that. And we've got these double bonds between each oxygen molecule. There they are. So more energy is being put in to do that. And we're going to use the table to work out just how much energy we're putting in to do that. So from the table, we can see each double bond takes 496 kilojoules per mole of energy and we've just broken two of them. So that's two times O double bond O, which is two times 496, which is 992 kilojoules per mole. So in total, the total amount of energy we've needed to put in to break apart all of those reactant molecules, the energy in is 1652 plus 992, and that comes to 2644 kilojoules per mole. And that will be the first mark on our exam question. We then need to consider what happens when the products are formed. So let's first of all form this molecule of CO2. Here's the carbon atom, and it's going to join with an oxygen on this side with a double bond. So there's the double bond forming between the carbon and that oxygen. And then the same happens at the other side. We've got a carbon joined via a double bond to another oxygen atom. And all the time that these new bonds are forming, it's releasing energy. So we need to work out how much energy is released. Well, we've just formed two of these double bonds between a carbon and an oxygen. So two times C double bond O. And once again, we've got our bond energy table to help us. And we can see that C double bond O, each one is 743. So that's going to be two times 743 which comes to 1486 kilojoules per mole. We've now also got the two water molecules to form. So once again, the bonds are releasing energy as they form. So that's one water molecule here. And then another water molecule is being made, releasing more energy. And we can see from this how many bonds have been formed. We've formed one, two, three, four bonds between an oxygen and a hydrogen. So that's four times O to H bonds, which is four times four, six, three, which comes to one, eight, five, two 
kilojoules per mole. So the total energy out from all of those bonds that have been forming to make these product molecules, total energy out is 1486 add 1852 and that comes to 3338 kilojoules per mole. The final step is to work out the overall energy change which can also be given the symbol delta H and that's simply the energy in the first number 2644 take away the energy out the second number 3338 and that comes to minus 694 kilojoules per mole. So in an exam question you'd get a mark for working out the energy in by breaking the bonds you'd get a mark for the energy given out when the bonds are made and it's releasing energy. And then the overall energy change gets you your third mark. This is what a typical bond energy calculation would look like on your actual exam paper. They will give you the equation showing the bonds and they will also give you the bond energies for the various bonds involved. So I strongly recommend you set it out like this, bonds broken on the left, which is energy we need to put in to break those bonds and bonds made on the right and that's going to give out energy when those new bonds are made. So we have a look through picking off each of these bonds. So we've got a C to H bond and we've got four of those. So we've got C to H bonds and that's 413 but we've got four of them and that comes out at 1652. Now a good tip is as you consider each of these bonds, cross them off on the equation, and then you know you've looked at those bonds and you're not going to forget about them. Okay, next one, we've also got a CL to CL bond over there, and that is 243. So once again, we'll cross it off so we know we've dealt with that bond. And then we add up these numbers and we get 1895 kilojoules per mole and that is energy in to break those bonds. So that is the first stage and that will get you the first mark on your exam question. We then need to think about the bonds being made. So first of all we've got some C to H bonds again but this time we've only got three of them. Here they are one two three. So C to H is going to be 413 times three and that comes to one two three nine we've then got this C to CL bond and that is three two seven and we've also got this H to CL bond and that is four three two so we add all of those up and that comes to 1,998 kilojoules per mole. And that is the energy released or the energy out from making those new bonds. So on your exam, you've already got a mark for working this out, a mark for working this out. The final mark is for working out the overall energy change. And remember, we can also call that value delta H. And that is simply the first number, take away the second number. So that's 1895, take away 1998. And that is minus 103 kilojoules per mole. So that would get your third mark in your exam. I also wanted to say why we've ended up with a negative number for our answer for the overall energy change. And that's because we've put 1,895 kilojoules per mole of energy in to break the bonds, but when new bonds were formed and energy was given out, it releases more energy, 1,998 kilojoules per mole. So overall, it's an exothermic reaction. And that's often an exam question. It might say, explain using bond energies why it's an exothermic reaction. And that's because we're getting more energy out from making new bonds 
than the amount of energy we put in to break the old bonds. So overall, it's energy out. And that also ties in this negative number with the reaction profile of an exothermic reaction, which is this shape. So the overall energy change, which I can draw in red, would be here, and it's going down. The chemicals overall are giving out energy, so their energy level is dropping, and that's why also it's a negative number. So if delta H is negative, it's an exothermic reaction. If you get a positive number for this answer, it's an endothermic reaction. If you found this video useful and you now feel more confident doing those bond energy calculations, please remember to give the video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.